so uh, we start working on quadratics and other curvy graphs, and some of the problems were very straightforward uses of your calculator, and then there was a question that was much, much more difficult, and I wanted to go over how you could approach that problem. So you were given in the problem a couple pieces of information. You were given, um, I believe it was 0, comma negative 9, although it doesn't really matter what the point is, and negative 1, comma positive 9, and that the axis of symmetry was x is equal to positive 4. So if I type that information in, or if you try to graph it, you can see a few things. You can see a point down there. Actually, you can't because I need to zoom out. Now you can see a point down there. You can see a point over here. And let's label that. And you've got an axis of symmetry, x equals 4. But you do not have your entire quadratic equation. So the question is, how do you use that information to find the rest of the quadratic equation? And the idea is axis of symmetry means you have a mirror image for each of the points that you were given. So for example, this point down here has to be mirrored over equidistant to the other side. So because it's four steps to the left of the axis of symmetry, I know I need to move an equidistant to the right. And so now I know that I have another point of 8, comma, negative 9 that has to be on my graph. Similarly, I also know I have the point of uh, 9, comma, 9. And that point comes from the same reasoning here. The point I was given was five steps to the left of the axis of symmetry, so I have to have a buddy point five steps to the right of the axis of symmetry. But now I have four points. I still don't have an equation. So what I can do is find the a, b, and c values of my quadratic equation based on the points that I have. I really don't even need all four of them. I just wanted to show you that I could get those four. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fact that if I plug in x equals 0, I get y equals negative 9. So that means negative 9 is a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. In other words, negative 9 is equal to c. I've been telling you that the y-intercept is the c value. Don't just take my word for it. Understand why that's true. It's true because if you plug in x equals 0, then the y value has to equal c. Now, let's keep this information and let's plug in another piece of, another piece of information, like, for example, 9 comma 9. Why not? That means if I plug in 9 over here and plug in 9 for both of my x's, the c value is negative 9, and I'm not going to quite be able to solve for a and b, but I'm going to at least get another piece of information that I can then use with another equation. I'll go ahead and add 9 to both sides to get 18 equals a times 81 plus b times 9. And this is optional, but I'm going to divide everything by 9. Because if you divide everything by 9, you get smaller numbers. Like a equals 9a plus b. I'm going to put a box around that, and we'll use that again in a second. I'm going to use this point. I could also use the other point. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to use this point up here on the top left to get the equation 9 equals a times negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1 minus 9. Because remember, my c is still equal to negative 9. I'm going to proceed basically the same way I did before. So I have 18 equals a times 1 minus b, or a minus b. So now I can grab this equation and bring this one right here. So that's 2 equals <laughs> uh, 
and sitting too still. 2 equals 9a plus b, and add those together to get 20 equals 10a. The reason I added them together is because adding a negative b and a positive b cancels out. Dividing by 10 tells me that 2 is equal to a. If I know 2 is equal to a, I can substitute that into either this or this to get my last value. If I use the purple equation, I have 2 equals 9 times a plus b. 2 equals 18 plus b. So b is negative 16 by subtracting 18 from both sides. Double check, and that works out with my blue equation as well works out with all the equations. So as a final check, what I can do is plug in the values of a, b, and c in order. y equals 2, x squared. b is negative 16. c is negative 9. And you'll see that my graph goes exactly through all of the points that I graphed. And it has the, y, the uh, axis of symmetry of x equals 4. So that's, that's a little bit of a challenging problem, but it's not too hard. It is really just using your skills from when we solved systems of equations by either substitution or elimination. I did it with elimination in this video. You could do it with substitution just as well and plugging in points until you get what you need. So try it out for yourself. Literally come up with a couple points and an axis of symmetry and see if you can find the equation that goes through them. You don't need to have me give you those points. There's nothing special about the points that are given in this video. Just two points and the axis of symmetry. You should be able to find a parabola that goes through those points. If you can't do it, ask me. I'll make you, I'll help you figure it out.